it's really actually a story of hometowns. The Haubs, Erevan, and Helga came to Tacoma as newlyweds. When they got to a certain age, as they were entering their 80s, they were reflective about what to do with a wonderful collection of Western American art. They came back to this notion of hometown. What is that special place in America for them? And it was Tacoma. Now, they'd been supporters of the museum before, so they knew us, and they'd been watching our growth and development, and they approached us. Would we be at all interested? And it did require some reflection. We had to really think about how it meshed with our Northwest art focus. And it goes hand in glove. And we're really portraying American art in smaller segments, a kind of Western portion, and of course, our own Northwest corner of the world. This collection at Tacoma Art Museum is the newest uh, major museum collection of this type in, in the United States. And I'd say this is really in the top 10 of Western art museums in the country. There are several other collections at museums like the Buffalo Bill or the Eamon Carter in Fort Worth, Texas, and our collection ranks right up there with some of the work in these other um, more established collections. So we're really fortunate uh, to have this up here. There's 295 artworks in the Total Promise gift, and we've got 130 on view right now at the Tacoma Art Museum. So there's a lot more to come, we're really excited. What may be surprising to some visitors here to the museum is what the Haubs didn't collect. As Germans, they had suffered through many a war and conflict. They were not interested in purchasing works of the West depicting battle scenes. They were very respectful of Native American culture, and they didn't want to buy works of art that they would find in any way derogatory. One of the fabulous ancillary benefits of the Haub family collection gift was the opportunity to build new galleries and we were very purposeful in thinking about what the most prominent site would be. And so the museum is even more anchored downtown with higher visibility along Pacific Avenue. And it's as if we've filled in a gap tooth in our relationship to our neighbor, the federal courthouse, the proximity to the University of Washington, and even our sister institutions. When you're working with a building that exists, there's always the question of how do you relate to that building? Do you relate exactly as if that building was just now extruded along the street, or do you sort of investigate a different way of relating? And so by doing a darker building, a lower building, a more modest building to the existing building, we didn't want to take anything away from that building. We wanted to sort of support it, but where those two pieces come together, that's the void between the buildings and that's where the entry happens between the buildings. We were purposeful also in thinking about the outdoor spaces. We want to bring light into the galleries and that also meant large glass windows with these fabulous movable screens as a, a unique feature. And that also meant that the life of the museum was now more visible on the street, and the activity of pedestrians and cars going by was also something that those of us in the museum could glimpse outside. By any measure, this is a transformative gift to the museum, the largest in our almost 80-year history, both in the collection itself being gifted to us and then also so thoughtfully funds for new galleries and to endow the curator and other educational programs.